Hello, crafty friends. So I had a couple of friends request um, to see some more of the stuff from my haul videos um, from the fabric. So I went back to the baby store and I got a bunch more baby clothes. And what I did was I hacked them all up before I left because they weren't all going to fit in my... Um, they weren't all going to fit in my suitcase and I was limited on space. Well, not space. I could fit it, but it was too heavy. So I had to um, cut everything apart and just salvage the pieces that I really wanted. And then I left basically the bodices and the sleeves with Danita that she could repurpose. And I just took the skirts of all the dresses. But I wanted to kind of show you some of these beautiful things. So my background here is another, it's just the bottom of a lady's dress. It had a beautiful... Um, metallic fabric on top and then this was like a kind of a nubby I don't know if you could see it here it's kind of a nubby texture but it's a it's a polyester it's got some stretch to it but I tea dyed it or coffee dyed it and it came out really cool I'm going to use it for a journal cover because I really dig it so always remember that I collect gold and aqua metallic fabrics so I have a lot so if I see them I buy them I love this pink so um, I'm just going to go through these really quick and kind of show you. And then I'm going to show you a couple pages and some journals of what I actually do with this stuff. So this was um, actually a large child skirt. So this was, I think, like a size 6X. But if you look at that, that's, let's see, let's measure. So that's like a yard and a quarter lengthwise of fabric. If I take the seams out and make it one long piece of fabric this way. So you can get a lot of yardage out of one, you know, child's book. And then you have a traveler's notebook, right? Here's your traveler's notebook inserts or whatever that you want to do. Look at that. Perfect length. You could even do it this way and use a smaller piece of fabric to cover it. So make a gorgeous journal cover. That's one. And I, I, I look at scale too. Now this one, it, this is a like a kind of an all over leaf pattern, but it's it doesn't have specific ginormous leaves that make it, um, it's, it's a big small pattern, I call it. So you, it kind of looks like fireworks too, uh, that you can use because it's not too big. A lot of times scale is your problem when you're buying clothes to repurpose for journaling. Um, the scale of the fabric is too big. So that's why I like baby clothes because they have um, much smaller prints. Let's look at this little. Now again, this is not, this is probably, it's a little less than a yard because that's 18, a little less than 18 inches long. So it's probably like two inches shy of a yard um, of fabric, you know by probably a quarter. Yep, by eight inches. And if you pick this out, you could get a little bit more. You could probably get 10 if you unrolled this hem. Um, or nine inches, you get another inch if you un undid the, the hem and pressed it out. But I just love this. This would be so cute in a Christmas journal. Make some yo-yos out of this and um, make some pretty flowers. Again, this is a, um, a larger size. And this was actually a baby dress. But, yeah, because this is where the placket was for the little button. So, But it was just a really full-skirted baby dress. But, again, that's over a yard of fabric right there because... That's 18 inches. So it's like 27 inches times two. So what's that? 
I'm terrible at math. Don't ask me to do math. Anyway, it's over a yard of fabric. <laughs> and again, by probably, let's see. By nine and three quarter, including that, that's including the hem. So you take this hem out, and again, you're at, you know, 10 inches high. So, traveler's notebook, again, perfect size. Or, you know, most other journals, you're going to use a book, you know, any kind of a book, board, book binder. This is a, a larger size book. It would just, if you were, if you were going to, you know, cover this, you know, I'd, I'd probably go this way. Because then you'd have this long strip that you could use for, you know, a ribbon or something that would be cool. But definitely... You know, you could cover a couple, a few books with that. And again, the size of the the print is just the, the scale of that print is just the right size for journaling. I love this one. I love polka dots. I love aqua. That's my color. I'm seeing my nails and everything. My house is actually painted blue, smurf blue too. But this was a teeny tiny baby dress. I mean, the little the little bodice was like this big, you know, with a little sleeveless dress. But it was so sweet, and I just love this fabric. And I'm, I make, uh, I have stockings for my whole family that are all, you know, white and aqua and turquoise and gold metallic fabrics. And I have to make uh, my little grandson Toby one. And I'm going to make him a little elf. So I might use this for the little vest on the elf on his stocking. This one I thought was really sweet. It's a little dirty though. I'm noticing it's a little dingy. I'm going to have to run this through the wash with some OxyClean and brighten it up. But I may end up uh, tea dyeing this lightly with a little tea just to give it a little bit more antique -y look. But I just love that. This reminds me of some fabric that I have. Some fabric samples from the 1940s. But I'm going to see if I can get it closer so you can, there, look at the texture, see, it looks, it almost looks woven, I just love it, with the little, and anything sparkly, you know, that's me, when I was a little girl, if I would disappear in the store, my mom just said, where is the sparkly stuff, because she will be there, and I disappeared one time when I was hiding in a rack of sparkly fabric, playing with them all, so this little dress, I just, again, I wanted this fabric. I didn't care so much about the lining. It was just t-shirt fabric underneath. But it's got a really soft pink color. And her one ruffle is pink. And then the rest of it is like a lighter, you know, like a, just a creamy color. But I just thought it was lovely. And with the little, those little tiny flowers, this will look so cute on a journal page. And you see these a lot. And... This was a fairly big dress. This is the bodice. I think this was probably like a three or four T. But this in a botanical journal, wouldn't that be gorgeous? Oh my gosh. Look at that. So beautiful. And you can, the cool thing is about this when it's on this soft nylon net, you can actually cut these individual pieces out. You could fussy cut that out and just use um, the flowers themselves all by themselves on a page, that would be beautiful. I'll probably do that with some of them and then leave some of it whole. And then this one, this one was one of my favorites. I just love this. Sorry, I uh, they had long sleeves, so I left Anita the long sleeve so she could have some of this fabric, but look at that. Oh my gosh, that is so Victorian looking. And it's got like, it's not real Chantilly lace, but it's a Chantilly reproduction of a nylon, soft nylon lace. But look at that bow with that cute little mirror button. You know, you take that off and stick that on a journal. And then, um, obviously, I'll pick all this off carefully. Usually, I chop them up with scissors, but this one I didn't take apart because I'm going to take the time and actually pick it apart properly. But then you got a little ruffle here. You got some more Ecru color lace. I think it's... I think that is so beautiful and if I had a baby girl in my life that I could put this on I wouldn't have chopped it up but it's gonna make a beautiful journal and then some of this dotted fabric 
Again, this is another skirt. I just tossed the t underskirt because it was t-shirt fabric, but I love any of these, these soft nets. I like, I usually buy anything with net, but if it has a pattern, I'll for sure buy it. If it is, um, even if it's not a really full skirt, this one was a particularly full, like ballerina style skirt. But I, uh, and this stuff dyes nice. I showed you guys how to dye this stuff with paint. Um, in another previous video. And then another thing I buy a lot, this I bought at another store. This was an, a lady's um, skirt and it was just rows and rows and rows of this lace. And I've already taken a lot of these and cut these flowers out. See, sometimes you'll get this little, so that's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll try to wash this out and if it doesn't wash out, I'll, I'll coffee dye it, it's all right. The opposite side doesn't have anything on it, and that's actually the back side of the flower anyway, so it doesn't matter. But, you know, you can sit and fussy cut these little flowers out and these little leaf things, and then construct them together with other, you know, pieces of doily and things that you've cut apart and make some amazing things. This one, a double layer of this would make a, a cool, you know, cover or band on, on something if you wanted to you know, sometimes I'll wrap a package with it. Just put the, you know, the, the package is long and skinny and I'll take some of this and put it around and just hot glue it stuck on there, especially if it's a crafter because they'll take it and they'll upcycle it and use it. But there's all kinds of things. You could cut all this away and have just this band and use that band as a belly band in your journal. And so... This is another baby dress that this was actually the lining of the baby dress, but it's a really fine cotton that you can see through. And I'm going to try um, ironing this to a piece of butcher paper, trimming it down to eight and a half by 11 and running it through my printer and uh, try to print something on it and see how it looks. Because So normally I, I toss stuff, but when I get some really cool, you know, soft cotton fabric like this, I will save it. And I love that pale pink color. And I'll probably use it in my, I'm doing a, um, what is her name? Jane Austen book. This is another little sweet little baby dress. So I cut part of it off and gave it to Danita and then I took the other piece, but look at that, how sweet that is. And then this, look, you can use that little piece as a pocket in a journal. You know, glue this part down, run another little gathering stitch here, put another little piece of elastic, or just have it be a ruffle at the bottom of a book. This little piece here, you could make it into a cute little snippet. It's got this little tiny ruffle here on the top. So there's a lot of different things you can look at. Try to look at things from different angles and different perspectives. Because if I just trim that little, if I just trim that little ruffle off, how cute would that be on the side of a journal? And that little piece with a flower or one of those embroidered flowers on there with some eyelash trim and things to make a little, you know, paper clip snippet. And look at those adorable buttons. So her little rose shapes. Cut the shanks off of those buttons and use them as little flat embellishments on your book. this this was actually a ladies blouse that I bought and I just loved the fabric I thought it was so pretty and very Jane Austen-y and it's a big print but it goes great so I tea dyed it and I made this journal cover with it so you can see the difference in the color just a slight difference and then it, it's pretty transparent so I, I glued it down with just a glue stick to my um, to my uh, file folder, and that's how I made it. And then I, I glued it down really good, and then I went and stitched it with a decorative stitch. And then this little ruffle was on the the blouse as a decoration on the bodice of the blouse, and I cut the ruffles off. I picked them off really carefully, and then glued them on there. But I really love how that turned out. It's so sweet. Don't tell my daughter, but it's a gift. And then I had this fabric, 
which I love this. Anytime I can find this, this is actually tool. This is not a soft stretchy netting. This is old school tool. And I have had this for ever. And, um, and I just love it. In fact, my daughter, my aunt made my daughter Megan this beautiful Victorian style dress with a red velvet bodice. And this was like four layers of this in the skirt, like a ballerina dress when she was a little girl. I think it's still in a bucket in my storage with her baby clothes. But um, that's how long I've had it. I hoard fabric just like I hoard paper. It's a, it's a sickness. And then this, actually, I think this was my blouse at one time. But the, I just loved the fabric. I didn't even want to wear it anymore. Look at that. And this is why I buy cream colored fabrics. Because you can dye this so easily. And this would just be gorgeous. I mean, it's pretty the way it is. Especially when it's white and it's transparent. You can put it over a color and it changes the whole character of it so with those ones I want to show you what I did in my journal so this is using that tool just put my image down and then stretch this over the top and stitched it down and this is a piece of baby dress that um, had an embroidered border on the bottom that I just loved so I just glued it down really good with a um, you know, this glue stick and then smoothed it out with my credit card and then stitched it on. And then this one is another one that I kind of just collaged pieces. This piece of lace trim, this is a piece of cotton and then I had a small little piece of this. This was a lady's blouse from the 70s and I just love that. It's very sheer organza fabric but I just love those pink flowers in it. I just thought it went really pretty. This was another piece of fabric that came off of, I think it was a bathrobe. Yeah, it was trim on a bathrobe and I still have some little pieces of it. So I have that, that was kind of like down the front and this was around the, the bottom of the bathrobe. So this is all I have left of it. But look at that. You know, it's, it's 1970s, but look at, you know, when you sit there and you take and you cut all those elements out, you know, cut the border off. I cut the flower out itself, fussy cut it out and glued it on there. Look, look how beautiful that looks. And if you wanted a smaller one, like inside maybe, I might do a tag. I could make a belly band with this. I could just cut, fussy cut one of these out and put it on a tag or on a, you know, use it like that to be a space to tuck things in. And oh, this was another piece of fabric. So it was bright pink and I coffee dyed it too because I wanted it to look more. This is the starting of my one of my Jane Austen travelers notebooks. Let me see. This one has some fabric. Okay, so this is that velvet fabric, this stuff. And you put I put it behind this peach colored paper or this peach colored paper behind it and it came out gorgeous. This is another piece of fabric that I had. I used the back side of the fabric and the right side of the fabric and then trimmed it out with this. I could have made this a belly band, but I wanted to cover the seam. So that's why I glued it down and I'll, I'll probably make a pocket or something here and tuck some things inside. But I love using fabric in journals and it, see on the back side it's got stitching here, but who cares? It's white. It, it all blends in. And once I do other things to that page, it's not going to matter. And then this is another thing that I do is I, I ruffle crepe paper and then trim it really small and put it down there for the ruffle. So it's a paper ruffle, but it came out really pretty. So I have all kinds of colors of crepe paper and then I just sit one day, I'll cut the crepe paper from the wide piece into probably like half inch, three quarter inch, and then I'll ruffle it up. And then, so I glued it on here and then I just trimmed it down because I, want, I didn't want a big giant ruffle on it. This is another piece of that. This is that really sheer pink, this stuff. So just glued it down <clears throat> and stitched around. And this is another fabric that I really loved. It's like, it's like fishnet kind of, but this was a lady sweater and it had little, you can see them on there. It has like little crystals or little beads. 
it's kind of woven in there. But you know what? If I were to find this fabric, first of all, it would be hard to find because I've never seen a fabric like this. But um, if you were to find it, it would be probably $12, $15 a yard. Even a quarter yard is going to be more than I paid at the thrift store, $1.99 for this blouse. So I was happy with it, how it came out. Now, it's too it's got too much stretch and give here to use it like I had intended as I could still stick something in there but I am afraid it's going to stretch out so I'm still deciding what I'm going to do with that and how I'm going to handle it I think that's it for fabric pages oh this one so I just had this couple small little pieces of this um it's good Chinese satin that I bought a long time ago. I think it was, they were fat quarters at Joann's of um, quilting fabric and they, all in pinks. And I think I made a doll quilt for my doll daughter. She, so that tells you how long ago, because she's 23 now. So when she was little, um, but I just love it. And I think it goes nice with the little tea motif. So that's it. Another piece of, this is just a piece of, um, muslin white muslin and I dyed it with some of this ink just you know made it pink and then hit it with a heat gun to dry it because the ink tends, tends to stay damp and then use that to glue the page on just collaged some different papers and put that lady on there so anyway, this is just a little work in progress. I didn't intend to show you the journal. I just wanted to show you the different applications and different ways that you could utilize fabric in your journal if you're not typically a journal, a fabric, you know, person. I just think that they add a tactile element to your journal, so it's really fun. So, you know, give it a try. I have, so this is, there's this one too. Now, this is the cover of my grief journal that I've been working on and doing videos about and this again was just you know this was a collar on a bathrobe this was a lady's skirt that I had this is an old doily this was some uh I forget what kind of what that is called but anyway and some old trim and then this was a piece of muslin that I coffee dyed and you know I just folded them all over laid the whole book down and then folded it all over and this was kind of a weird off shaped cut and I used that one because I love this fabric um, use that as the main piece now I did this one a long time ago probably 15 or 20 years ago and I did not glue it down the way I glue things down now but I just love this cover so I'm just gonna go with it even though I could pick it off and do it again so there's some there's some give to this fabric and it, it's loose because I didn't I just glued around the edges I didn't adhere all the fabric down which now I would probably use um, heat and bond or some kind of a, a product to iron it all together and make one big piece and then uh, glue the whole thing down really well with some PVA or, you know, glue stick or something. But that's that. So just wanted to kind of go over the little, you know, cool little things that you can do with, you know, I mean, this was a hot pink bathrobe. And it was ugly as heck, but I saw this fat, this, this, and I was like, okay, $8.99 for that ugly bathrobe. I don't really want to pay $8.99 for it, but I think that this, and it was a piece that was, you know, probably three times the length of this long, plus, you know, a piece of this, it went down the front length of the, uh, around the cuffs of the bathrobe and around the neck, I think it was, because yeah, this has got the, the little piece around the neck. Um, so, I mean, for $8.99, I think it was worth it, you know? I could probably sell just one of these cut out online for, you know, close to that price, just for one of them. So, I think, uh, you know, try to look beyond the things that you see in the stores and look beyond the ugliness of the garment itself and look at the detail of the fabric because that's really what's going to add some excitement and some spice and some little something different to your journals than everyone else's. 
So, hope you enjoyed this. If you like this video, or you'd like to see more of them, please leave me some comments. Give me a thumbs up and a like. I'd appreciate it. And thanks for stopping by. Have a great day.